Are you one of those people that think, yes, uh, the Bible is God's word. It's inspired by God, but you can't believe everything that it says. You know, there's some things that just aren't relevant for today. You want to just reach down, pull it out of the Bible, wad it up, and throw it in the fire. Why? Because that's the part of the word of God that you don't like. You can't believe that God would do that. We're going to talk about that today, about tearing up the Word of God. spoken in the word. He has had men of old sit down and write what he inspired them, what he breathed into them, words he breathed into them. They were to write it in a book. It was to be preserved and it is called the word of God. And yet down through the ages, even today, there are people that say that was for another time. That was for another culture. That is not for today. People have sat in judgment on the word of God and they have said, oh yes, it says that God created the heavens and the earth. But, but that's not really the way it happened. It was a myth. It was a story. You see, we evolve. We've learned this. And what they want to do is they want to take portions of the word of God and just throw it away and say it's not relevant for today. Well, it's the fourth year of Jehoiakim. Jeremiah chapter 36, the son of Josiah, king of Judah. In that fourth year, this word came to Jeremiah from the Lord saying, take a scroll and write on it all the words which I have spoken to you from the first day that I spoke to you, from the days of Josiah even until this day. Now, if you remember correctly, Josiah in the 13th year of his reign, Jeremiah steps on the scene as a prophet. In the 18th year of his reign, Josiah finds the word of God, his, his servants do, that's been lost in the house of God. And, and, and Josiah uh, uh, reads the words of this book. They read them to him and he sees that they're in great trouble because they, their fathers have not obeyed the word of God. Consequently, he calls all the people. He reads to them the word of God. They listen to the word of God. And as they listen to the word of God, then they walk in obedience. But that obedience doesn't last. And so now he's saying, God is saying to Jeremiah, I want you to sit down and I want you to write on the scroll all the words that I have been speaking to these people from the days of Josiah, even until now, the days of Jehoiakim. And he says, write them on a scroll. He says, perhaps, verse 3, the, south, the house of Judah will hear all the calamity which I plan to bring on them. Let's just stop and look at that. I always mark calamity when I see it in the Bible because Amos tells us that calamity doesn't occur in a city, but what the Lord is behind it. So you can know that every calamitous event, you may not like hearing this, but it is true. 9-11 that forever changed the United States of America and forever changed the world and the way we travel and everything. God was behind that calamity. Now, why was he behind that calamity? If God's behind a calamity, the purpose of that calamity is not to destroy you. The purpose of that calamity is to grab you and to get your attention. And you're saying, listen to me. God's saying, listen to me. Listen to me. I'm the one that has the words of life. I am God. You cannot live this way. Listen to me. 
And so he's talking about calamity. So I always put a black circle around it and I color it red because it's red hot. And then it says, which I plan to bring on them. So God is the one that is going to do this. And this is what he says. In order that, why is God bringing calamity? And this is what you need to know. In order that every man will turn from his evil way. You're going this way. It is evil. I want you to turn from your evil way. He says that they will turn from their evil way. Then, then, time phrase, you can put a green clock around it or a green circle, then I will forgive their iniquity and their sins. Now, I color every reference to iniquity, every reference to sin, every reference to evil way, I color it brown because it's devoid of of light. I'd color it black, but I can't, I can't color it black because it's hard to see. And then Jeremiah called Baruch and uh, the son of Neri, and Baruch wrote on a scroll at the dictation of Jeremiah all the words which the Lord God had spoken to him. So they sit down. And Jeremiah begins to relate everything that he has said to the children of Israel during this time that he's been prophesying to them. Baruch is sitting there with the scroll and with his pen and with his ink, and he's writing it all down. Now, when is he doing it? This is important. In the fourth year of Jehoiakim. And I assume that you've been studying with me long enough and I forget that God invited you to this program today because God wants to speak to you and God wants to take you deeper and God wants to teach you how to discover truth for yourself. So the fact that you found this program today, the fact that you found this ministry, not me, but Precept Ministries International, a ministry that is devoted to teaching people all over the world, 150 countries, 70 languages, how to discover truth for themselves, how to study the Bible inductively. So go to preceptsforlife.com after the program. Go to preceptsforlife.com. Hook on, get on that website and find out how we can help you go deeper, no matter what language that you are, are able to speak, we can teach you. We have people all over the world. Now, God wants you to hear his word. God wants you to know his word because, listen, great calamity is coming on the world. Calamity that you couldn't even dream of. The Bible says that it is calamity, it is destruction, it is a time of distress such as has never been and never will be again. And you need to be prepared. So he sits down and he writes it on the scroll and Jeremiah commanded Baruch saying, I am restricted. I cannot go into the house of the Lord. Now remember, you put a green clock, or if I didn't tell you that, put a green clock over in the fourth year of Jehoiakim. So Jeremiah is saying to Baruch, now I'm restricted. I cannot go into the house of the Lord. They did not like Jeremiah. They did not like his prophecies. And so he says, so go and read from the scroll which you have written at the dictation, at my dictation. Now listen to what he says, the words of the Lord. Now when I come to any reference to the word of God, what I do is I draw like a, a, a book in purple and then I color it green on the inside. And so I can see every reference to the words of God. What Baruch wrote for Jeremiah was the words of the Lord. You go and uh, the words that you have written at my dictation, the words of the Lord to the people in the Lord's house on a fast day. I want you to go and I want you to read the scroll to them. I want you to read to those that are coming to the house of the Lord. Now remember in the last program, I told you I color in a dark blue every reference to the house of the Lord. Now, these people are coming on a fast day. 
I marked fast because it's important to understand fasting. And I colored that a purple and then I underline it in a, in a brown because a fast day causes you to examine yourself and see if there's any evil way in your heart. So this is a tradition that they have of coming periodically on a fast day. He says, and also you shall read them to all the people who come from their cities, not just to the local people, but all the people that have come. Perhaps their supplication will come before the Lord. Now, I take supplication and I, I mark it like uh, just two hands up. I just come around the wor word with a little half moon circle and underline every reference to prayer or to supplication that way. I do it in purple. I color it pink. You can do anything that you want to do, but I would suggest that you mark it. What he's saying is this. I'm going to have you read this. They're going to hear their awful condition and state. They're going to come to me in supplication. And perhaps they will turn from their evil way, he says. For great is the anger and the wrath that the Lord has pronounced against this people. Now, I mark anger with a little red kind of back and forth, and I color it yellow because it's the anger of the Lord. And yellow is my color for God. And then wrath, I just take a red pen and I go up and down kind of like flames. And so he's saying that God's anger and his wrath is great against this people. And maybe if they hear his word again, they will turn to him in supplication. They will turn to him from their evil way. They will have uh, an essence of repentance. So Baruch, the son of Neri, I did according to all that Jeremiah, the prophet, commanded him, reading from the book, the words of the Lord. These are not ordinary words. Reading from the book, the words of the Lord in the Lord's house. Now, in the fifth year of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, in the ninth month, all the people in Jerusalem and all the people from the cities of Jerus uh, Judah came to Jerusalem. They're getting up, they're leaving, they're packing up, they're coming to Jerusalem. Why? Because it is a fast day. What is the year? It's one year later. It's the fifth year of the reign of Jehoiakim. What is the month? It's the ninth month. Fifth year, ninth month, I put a green circle or a green, green clock over so I know the time. And right now it's time for a break, but don't miss what I'm going to say afterwards. It's so crucial. Welcome back, beloved. Baruch read from the book. Let me read from the book. Then Baruch read from the book, Jeremiah 36, 10. The words of Jeremiah in the house of the Lord, in the chamber of Gamariah, the son of Shaphan, the scribe, in the upper court at the entry of the new gate of the Lord's house to all the people. You know exactly where he's standing, if you know the scriptures and if you know the layout of the temple. Now, when Micaiah, the son of Gamariah, the son of Shaphan, heard all the words from the book, he went down to the king's house, into the, scribe's uh, into the scribe's chamber. And behold, all the officials were sitting there. Elishama, the scribe, Delilah, the son of Shemaiah, El uh, Nathan, El Nathan, the son of A Akbor, Akbor, excuse me, and Jeremiah, the son of Jeremiah, the son of Shaphan, and Zedekiah, the son of Hananiah, and the other officials. I got through that. <laughs> Just don't imitate me. I've told you I can't read well. All right. Micaiah declared to them all the words which he had heard, which Baruch read from the book to the people. 
Now listen, he has left the Lord's house. He has come over here with all these officials and he declared to them these words. Then all the officials sent Jehudi, the son of Nathan, uh, well, I'm going to skip that, to Baruch, saying, take in your hand the scroll from which you have read to the people and come. So Baruch, the son of Neri, took the scroll in his hand and he went to them. And he said, sit down, please, and read it to us. And Baruch read it to them. And when they had heard all the words, they turned in fear to one another. And they said to Baruch, we will surely report all these words to the king. Why? They weren't good words. And they asked Baruch, saying, tell us, please, how did you write all these words? Was it at his dictation? Jeremiah's dictation. Then Baruch said to them, he dictated all these words to me and I wrote them in ink on the book. Then the official said to Baruch, go, hide yourself. Go, hide yourself and Jeremiah and don't let anyone know where you are. Why? They knew what the king, how upset the king would be when he heard these words. Because what are these words about? These words are about wrath. These words are about the anger of the Lord. These words are about the judgment of God because they didn't listen to the word. So now watch what it says. So they went into the king in the court, with, but they deposited the scroll in the chamber of El Shahanah, the scribe, and they reported all the words to the king. Then the king sent Jehudi to get the scroll, and he took it out of the chamber, and he stood uh, uh, and he read it to the king as well as to all the officials who stood by the king. Now the king was sitting in the winter house, in the ninth month. Mark the time. With a fire burning in the brazier and uh, uh, before him was like a little grill or something, like a little furnace that keeps them warm. And there was a fire burning and it says, and when Jehudi had read three or four columns, the king caught it with a scribe's knife, which was a very sharp knife for dealing with paper, and he, he says, and he threw it into the fire that was in the brazier. He just took the word of God. He didn't like what he read, and arrogantly he cut it, and he threw it into the fire. Listen to me very carefully. When you take away part of the word of God because you don't like it, or you don't agree with it, you are setting yourself above God. And listen, no one can set themselves above God and get away with it. And so this is what it says. It says, when Jehudi read three or four columns, the king cut it with a scribe's knife, threw it into the fire that was in the brazier until all the scroll was consumed in the fire that was in the brazier. There was not one word that he wanted to hear. Yet the king and all of his servants who heard all these words were not afraid, nor did they rend their garments. Now listen, when Josiah listened to the words of God that were found in the house of God, the first five books, the Torah, he tore his clothes. He wept before God. He humbled himself. And because of that, God spared Josiah and spared the people until Josiah died because he responded correctly. But they did not, they were not afraid. They did not rend their garments. Even though Elphana and Deliah and Gamariah pleaded with the king, don't burn the scroll, he would not listen to them. He just wouldn't listen. Don't burn the scroll. He would not listen. So it's like, okay, I tore it out. I threw it away. I burned it up. It no longer exists. It is not true. I want to tell you something. <laughs> you can't do that to God's word. It says, and the king commanded 
Jeremiah, the king's son, Sariah, the son of Ezra, anyway, and Shemai, to seize Baruch the scribe and Jeremiah the prophet, but the Lord hid them. Now, they had a heads up from the other guys. They knew what could happen. And so God is hiding them. God is protecting them. But know this, what did God say to Jeremiah in Jeremiah chapter 1 when he called him to be a prophet? He said, I want you to know, I watch over my word to perform it. You can tear it up, you can burn it, you can throw it away, but it does not alter that it will come to pass. Then the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah after the king burned the scroll and the words which Baruch had written at the dictation of Jeremiah saying, take yet another scroll and write on it all the former words that were on the first scroll which Jehoiakim the son of Judah burned. And concerning Jehoiakim, king of Judah, you shall say, you have burned this scroll, saying, why have you written on it that the king of Babylon will certainly come and destroy this land and will make man and beast to cease from it? He says, therefore, thus says the Lord concerning Jehoiakim, king of Judah, he shall have no one to sit on the throne of David. And his dead body shall be cast out into the heat of the day and the frost of night. In other words, his son may come to the throne, but he's not going to stay there. His son was Coniah. He came to, and he's also called Jeconiah. And he comes to the throne. And in three months, he's deposed to Babylon. He says, I will also punish him and his descendants and his servants for their iniquity. I will bring on them all the inhabitants of Jerusalem and on the men of Judah all the calamity, you want to mark it again, that I have declared to them. But they did not listen. God has spoken. He expects you to listen. If you don't listen, you reap, you sow to the wind and you reap the whirlwind. It says, then Jeremiah took another scroll, gave it to Baruch, the son of Neri the scribe, and he wrote on it at the dictation of Jeremiah all the words of the book, which Jehoiakim, king of Judah, had been burned in the fire, and many similar words were added to them. Similar words of wrath and judgment and the righteous anger of God because they did not listen. Down through the ages, there have been mass bonfires when the church has burned the word of God in the language of the people, when they have burned at the stake those that have given their lives so that others could know the word of God. But you know what? The word of God lives and they've perished. If you don't live by every word that comes out of the mouth of God, precious one, you're in danger. Just remember that. Thank you, beloved. Thank you so much for honoring God's Word. Thank you so much for wanting to study His Word. And thank you so much for supporting us. It is a very expensive enterprise to cut these programs, to make them available on television, on radio, on the internet, to get them around the world. But you know what? We feel that it is of such great value because you're to live by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. And so we feel this calling upon us to help you discover truth for yourself, to give you an opportunity to go through a book of the Bible with us. And although I mess up the pronunciation of all these people, still you're hearing all the words that Jeremiah wrote. And when you hear those, those words are to go deep into your soul. Jesus said that the words that he spoke were spirit. They're life. They, they are sharper than any two-edged sword. They discern the thoughts and the intents of the heart. It's the very bread by which we live. It's the lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. So what is God's precept for you today?
God's precept for you is to remember that you need to know all the words of the book. Jeremiah had Baruch write all the words. And when the king destroyed them, he had them write them again. The word of God lives and abides forever. Not one shot. Not one tittle, those little Hebrew do flunkies over the words will ever be changed. This is the word of God. And you and I are to hang on his every word. Thank you. Join with us. Help us. Support us, will you? Help us reach the world. There's so many people that are crying out for more in-depth Bible studies, and we have them. If you think this is good, you ought to see our Precept Upon Precept courses. Go online to preceptsforlife.com, preceptsforlife.com, and find out how you not only can discover truth for yourself, but go deeper with others and disciple others. These are the last of the last days. And you and I need to be prepared. His anger, his wrath is going to be poured out on this earth. But there is, as we're going to see next in our next program, there is a preservation for those that listen. <laughs> 